it's Lizzie Yule from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you for joining me again today. Today I have got a very much more autumnal project for you. Um, and it is using the lovely Pleasant Pheasant stamp set, which is on page 44 of your new autumn winter catalogue. Um, it's gorgeous. And for those of us in the UK, um, I think there's nothing really more autumnal than pheasants. Um, they're certainly out and about at the moment around us. And it's still only so early September which is slightly depressing um, so this I think is gorgeous yes it's got happy Thanksgiving which in the UK we don't tend to celebrate um, but I don't think that's an issue per se uh, wishing you health happiness and riches of, and the riches of God's bounty during this season and always great for Harvest Festival so although we don't have Thanksgiving as such we do have Harvest Festival coming up um, back end of September, beginning of October. Um, it's a bit of a variable feast depending on where you are in the country, I think. Um, but certainly for us, it's it's the first weekend of October um, and this is perfect for that. Um, there's, there's this lovely wheelbarrow which has got pumpkins in. Um, they're, they're just a squash, so you, know, you can colour them in a different way um, if you don't want them to look like pumpkins. But and then this lovely bucket and this beautiful vine is just lovely. It's red rubber. I'm using the pheasant stamp, obviously. Um, and I love it. And this is the project. Now, I have to say I did this and then I opened the catalogue and realised that in the catalogue there's a very similar project. Um, but I, I did this without really registering. Um, anyway, so that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Um, I said earlier this week that I'm not a great fan of Stazon, and I'm going to be using Stazon. Um, I'm not a great fan of it, but it has its place, and this project it has its place in. So I've mounted up my pheasants on my stamparatus. Um, I've got a piece of the watercolour paper, um, and this I have cut at my usual um, kind of second layer, so five and a half by three and three quarters. Uh, don't worry about dimensions, they're all going to be on the blog post which is linked immediately below. Now, when you mount your pheasants on your stamparatus, there is actually a sort of a straight line which is here where the feet are um, and you can line that up against one of these grid lines. Um, so that's certainly how I did it and then just made sure it was roughly where I wanted it on the card. Um, I've used the new braided, what do we call it, braided linen trim, um, which is in the autumn winter catalogue, and just frayed the ends. Um, so I've just done a simple knot round the mat, but we'll come to that in a moment. So, stays on. Um, acid free, archival, fast drying, solvent. It has an almond smell. Um, it... The thing that I have an issue with on this isn't so much the ink, it's the cleaner that you need to use to get it clean, um, which is fairly aggressive. Uh, but I will go through how I would clean my stamps having used stays on. And the first thing I would say is I would never use them on photopolymer because the cleaner really is not going to do your photopolymer any good. There are different views on this but for me I'm just going to bring in the stamp set so I've got something to push against um, for me oh yes and that's worth remembering the stamp case is perfect for flattening your lid um, so yes for me um, I, I will not use stays on on photopolymer um, so that's just my personal choice but on red rubber yeah okay when it's when it's appropriate um, so it's because this is watercolour paper um, and therefore it's it's got a, um, a surface to it as in you know it's not flat 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 um, you may need to stamp it more than once which is why I'm using Stamparatus because then it will go back into exactly the same place uh, that's not too bad let's have a look at the original yeah yeah, no, that will do. It's surprising, actually, how once you colour it in, it looks, the stamping is, looks better than it did before. So, 
let's pop that to one side and get this cleaning done. So, stays on cleaner. This I've had for ages. Um, we sell it. Um, we sell it with our own branding on. Um, but I've had this for ages, so it's fine. Um, so you just, with the inbuilt foam, well, it's not foam, um, fibre nozzle thing, you just rub it over your stamp and it melts the ink. And then with a piece of kitchen paper, just pick the worst of that up. And then, get rid of that, um, then you need your stamp and scrub and a large block because what you need to do is take it off your stamparatus and pop it on a block so you can scrub it. Let's get rid of that because we don't need the stamparatus anymore. So, stamp and scrub and get, make sure you've freshly misted it and because that's what's going to help your help keep your um whoops let's move the grid paper why don't we um so yes it's what's going to take that last bit of the stamp cleaner off sorry i'm juggling the camera um but make sure you get it really well lathered up and then clean it off as you would normally and i would be tempted to do that a couple of times you can see it's stained slightly um so because basically what you're doing is you're adding a solvent to get a solvent off um, and the solvent is is what's what's the issue if you like I will probably give that another clean before I get before I put it away um, because I do want to make sure that it is really 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 clean um, let's just tuck my paper down again because it's come up there we go I just have it stuck down with a bit of washi tape. just helps keep body and soul together. Oh, we get Right, okay, so I'm going to use watercolour pencils. Um, if you were um, lucky enough to get the ones that came out in August, um, which are the assortment two, you will also have Cajun Craze and Cherry Cobbler in here. Crushed Curry would be a useful colour um, for this and possibly Garden Green. But... Um, they aren't available anymore, so I'm not going to use them because for anybody else, they don't have them to use. So, always useful to have the picture you're following. Um, so I need that out and that I think is all I need, yes. Right, so I'm going to start with the male um, pheasant which is the one that is sort of more gloriously coloured. So I've got Pacific Point and Real Red. Now there is Cherry Cobbler in the assortment too, which would be quite a good colour for his face. Um, but I don't have that to use, so I'm not using it. Uh, pumpkin Pie for his beak. And while we've got it out, we might as well do her beak as well, although we will be using some more of that. And then Early Espresso is the main colour that I'm going to be adding. You do not have to add a huge amount. There's a lot of pigment in these pencils, so don't go too mad. And I'm basically just scribbling um, where I fancy having some darker colour. Uh, and then on his tail. And I'm not even keeping inside the lines because that's not the look I'm going for. And then we'll add a bit to her. I probably used a bit too much on her on my original so I will use a bit less. Now you could of course use um, your ink pads uh, that would work too. Um, just squeeze some ink into the lid of your ink pad um, and then pick up and use it like a watercolour um, but this is a, a really easy way of, of colouring uh, and I'll just add a bit of pumpkin pie as well. Right, uh, early espresso for the ground and again I'm only going to be adding a light amount 
and then some basic grey for their legs. And you can add a bit of basic grey to do some shading if you want. And again, I might add a bit on the on the ground, particularly at the back, just to add some shading. Now, this is where I really go quite mad. Um, let me just get a pencil sharpener because I really don't put the colour anywhere particularly carefully. I just add it because it's a watercolour. So, you I mean, you can be reasonably accurate, but you don't have to be that accurate. Um, and it kind of works. It's one of the joys of watercolour, really, that precision is not necessarily what you're looking for. Um, if you want precision, watercolour probably isn't what you should be using. Just make sure you colour in under their bodies as well, and then we'll add a little bit of pumpkin pie under there as well, just for a bit of shadow, and then some old olive, because it's grass, and whilst it's autumn and therefore mostly dead, Let's remember it was grass, so we'll give it a bit of colour, but not too much. But equally, we don't really want it to be, you know, solid Daffodil Delight, because it's it's a bit tired at this time of the year. So a bit of softening is fine. And then in underneath, and there we go. Right, OK, so I've got a piece of kitchen towel and my aqua marker. I've got the one with the point with the smallest nib and I'm going to start by colouring in the features if you like. And then just, just make sure I've got a bit more water running. Just if you if it gets a bit dry just squeeze the barrel. Probably gone from the sublime to the ridiculous now. It's better. Yeah, because we're we're now running, so if that happens, just pick it up. It'll be fine, and I need a little bit more red because I had that run. So just pick it up off the off the uh, pencil, and you can add it back in. Right. Okay. So then this is basically just sweeping the colour across. Do just, you know, be careful that you don't run one bird into the other because you do want them to be distinct. So I hope you've all now got your autumn winter catalogues. If you haven't, I'm going to just go straight down into the grey legs. Um, hop over to my on uh, my website and find the catalogue page and... Um, you can order one from me if you're in the UK. Um, I will happily let you have one if you don't already, already work with a demonstrator. Then I will be very, very happy to be your demonstrator. And I'm really not worrying um, about staying inside the lines. It's not that sort of look that I'm going for. I'm hoping this time I'm going to have her a little bit paler. So if you end up with too much pigment, just lift it off. And that's better. And again, down into her legs. And then whilst we're doing darker stuff, we can do the ground. And again, just be aware that their feet are there and they're not actually part of the ground. So colour up two, but not over. And then you can blend that out. And then the really fun bit is, and again, just be aware where the body ends and the ground begins and all those sorts of things. And what I tend to do is go in the direction of the grass so that it just, you know, comes out um, and it just adds to the 
depth of the image. But it's just so easy with the watercolour pencils because you just it all lays the colour down for you and then all you need to do is blend it out. I am by no means an artist. You're probably going, yeah, we can tell that, Liz. Um, but, yeah, it just... It just makes it so easy. And I do like bringing that out. So, as I say, I'm just embracing the whole watercolour look of slightly, you know, random. And there we go. Now I've got a bit of a schmush there, but it's fine because you can kind of rub it out with your brush. So there we are. Simple, simple. Let's get rid of that and put the whole thing together. So I've got a Cajun Craze mount. Um, now this is a bit a bit damp still, um, but it'll be fine. So let's grab some multi-purpose liquid adhesive. Now, because it is still a bit damp, I am going to be slightly more generous than I would normally be. Uh, and because it's watercolour paper, it will be able to take it without too much problem. Um, you don't actually need this amount if it were dry, but as I say, it's not. So let's just pop that down and then even more reason to press it from the back when it's slightly damp. There we go. Right, linen, braided linen trim. I'm just taking a piece of this and wrapping it round the back of our Cajun Craze piece and tie it in a knot. And we can adjust where that is in a moment when it's all done. Whoops, it'd be even better if it would go through. There we go. Pull that tight. Chop the end off so they're roughly the same size. You can then move this so that it's where you want it at this point. And you can, if you bend the card, it makes it slightly easier to move it round because it shortens the distance. Then straighten it all out, and then bring in your card base. Half a piece of pumpkin pie scored down the middle. Um, and again, I'm going to add some liquid adhesive to the back. And again, I'm going to add a reasonable amount either side. I am going to add a reasonable amount either side of the linen thread purely to help hold that down. And then just a scribble on the back. And pop that down. And you'd want to put a liner on the inside because the pumpkin pie is a little challenging to write on. Uh, and I would go for very vanilla, I think, because the watercolour paper isn't white. Um, I mean, it's not quite very vanilla either, but I think it's nearer. And then final touch is just take your trim, and this is choice. Obviously, you wouldn't have to, and just kind of fray the end. And then you are done. But there you go. So there are our two autumnal, very traditionally English, British um, cards. So I hope you enjoyed that. I love these stamps. I think they are, as I say, classically British. Um, although they look like they're, you know, Thanksgiving-ish. Um, let's go for the whole Harvest Festival theme and then it, it works. So there you are. Thank you very much indeed for watching. If you'd like to subscribe and you don't already, there's a button in the bottom right hand corner. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. That would be great. If you need any of the products, please jump over to my online store, which is, um, if you go immediately below in the description bar, you'll find a, a link to my blog post. That's the post for this 
um, project and there will be details of what I used and a link to my online store. And if you use the hostess code, you share in the rewards. And for every £30 you spend in any one online order using the host code, you also get a sparkling sunflower reward. Um, and when you've, got ten, when you've got 10 of those, you can exchange them for £30 of product of your choice. So thank you very much indeed. And I will see you again very soon. Bye.